remember being backstage with Joan Jett. She was talking about rock and roll, not like it was a genre of music, not like it was a little area in a record store. It was like, rock and roll is a way of life. I don't play rock and roll, I live rock and roll. That idea was just blew my mind. There are a ton of subgenres in rock, and today we're gonna go through some of them. R&B. The genre of R&B stands for rhythm and blues. And see, we got Little Richard, Fats Domino, B.B. King, Big Mama Thornton, Gladys Knight. As a woman who plays guitar, I've been asked so many times, oh, who are your favorite female guitar players? I'll never forget watching the clip of Sister Rosetta Tharp coming out and just slaying in front of this ecstatic crowd and just like bringing it to the people. Rockabilly. Some of the artists who define Rockabilly would be uh, Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly. I listen to Buddy Holly and I'm like, Buddy Holly took all the good melodies. Cause they're really just the best. No fat on them, just straight to the heart. And Chuck Berry, I mean, Chuck Berry invented rock guitar. Chuck Berry wrote iconic riffs that really, I think, defined the sound of guitar for an entire generation. Folk. Folk music, I think, really holds a mirror up to society for a lot of reasons. But the biggest one to me is that there are a lot of words. And so if you have a lot of lyrics, you have a lot of time to not only call out the big picture things, but the specific, like this is what's going on right now when I turn on my television. Of course, I think Bob Dylan, um, Simon and Garfunkel. Folk music to me is really like a period of time where people were writing these thoughtful, wordy, quotidian, but also grand songs, right? And one of the things I think is really interesting about the folk period is because of the economics of it, because of the culture, because of a lot of things, parts of the business were very siloed. You'd have songwriters and those songwriters were writing songs all the time. And then you had the artists and the artists would sing these songs and it was not really done until the people singing the songs were the people who wrote the songs. And it became this like artist as poet, artist as cult of personality, not necessarily artist as entertainer. Psychedelic rock. When I think psychedelic rock, I think guitar through a phaser, guitar through a wah. I think of colors that are, they're going like this, you know, they're like, nothing is rigid, like everything, if everything is just kind of in flux at all times. Taking acid and like literally seeing the world in a completely different way. Jimi Hendrix, love. Pink Floyd, the, um, the Sid Barrett years. Just big, big, big picture, you know? But big, big picture with like rose tinted glasses that were also melting off your face, you know? For me, a song like Castles Made of Sand by Jimi Hendrix is, that's a song that, again, he's talking about like life and death and eternity and the cyclical nature of all things and the guitar is swimming and it's got phase on it and it's just, it's moving like this. Glam. Glam rock is music that combined rock music, but also a lot of theatricality. It said, hey, rock and roll is theatrical. We're not just pulling from music, we're pulling from theater, we're pulling from film, we're pulling from all of these different places. Artists who were glam, we got T-Rex, Roxy Music, Bowie for a particular period. And I think of Bowie in elaborate costume and, and how he was just so other and so alien. Playing with like gender and sexuality and all of that, I mean, that is like masculine, feminine, neither, both. There's just a real theatricality to it. It was acknowledging that there was more to play with in rock and roll than just the songs and, and the haircut, you know? Punk rock. Punk means so many different things. Punk is a late 70s, what was happening at CBGB's. Uh, punk was what was bubbling up in England. Sex Pistols, Ramones, Buzzcocks, 
Bad Brains, Black Flag. Punk is so much more about like a feeling and, and about this like the underclass picking up arms, you know, against against the oppressive uh, upper class. And one of those things about being anti-establishment is like, well, it doesn't matter really if we can play. What we have is something to say. It was like, no, we're young and we're scrappy and we're angry. It was like music for the people and by the people. And it was music that you didn't have to be that skilled to play. Heavy metal, Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, Metallica. It was music that is very guitar centric, loud, heavy, just volcanic. Metal is sort of like classical music. Like when I listen to metal, I'm like, oh, it's like Stravinsky. You know, it's like more orchestral in its arrangements. I mean, it's more complicated to play, mathy at times, and a lot of iconography that's like, flirting with the darkness, flirting with the occult. And again, it takes people who are like very skillful to be able to pull off. I think all things are elastic and everything is a product of its time and place and in history. And so it's always going to be that people from earlier generations are going, well, this was rock and roll, but that's not rock and roll. And I think it's up, to, it's always up to the youth. It's always up to the youth to just reinvent, recreate, make it your own, paint with your own colors, create new colors. And that's, that's their job and that's rock and roll to me. For even more insight on the history of rock and roll, check out History Listen Rock, only from Audible.